Let me finish. What kind of grandmother would be so close to her, to her grandson, Harry, but then not use her power and influence as queen to protect them from the racist media coverage? Well, I like find what you're saying is, about the queen actually you know disgraceful. History, I so find what you're saying, finish. you're entitled to your let opinion, Zola. I the find, sorry, no, I'm allowed to respond to what you've just said. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. So before I get into it, I just want to say, y'all thought we had some problems over here in the U.S. Nah, nah. It's going down over there in the Royal Palace. They got some drama over there, and I'm going to talk about it. Now, when Meghan Markle and Prince Harry first got married, I knew it was going to be some drama going on because... She wasn't going to be used to that lifestyle, but see, we watch Cinderella and we watch all these princess movies and we think that we, it's the fairy tale over there. We didn't think all this stuff was going down. We didn't think they could do no wrong, but I knew from what Cinderella had to go through that some stuff was going to be going down over there and it was going to be some stuff she wasn't used to, but she had to experience that now. I remember back then they was talking about teaching her how to curtsy and teaching her how that about the clothes she wear and stuff. Like they was trying to change her whole identity. She she dang near threw her whole life away. She was an actress. She had some stuff going on, and she let it all go for the prince. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because her prince is holding her down. See, that's why nothing is wrong with her doing that. See, he has her back. And see, that's actually what a lot of us women are scared of. We're scared to throw it all away. And then once some stuff like this was going on in the royal palace happened, and then we got to change our whole identity and just deal with it in order to stay safe. Because Prince Charles didn't do that. He didn't do all that for Diana. He did not do that. So Harry is a mirror image of his mother and he got that good kind heart like his mama but I just I don't want to see him get hurt either I don't want to see him get hurt so let's get into this but so before I get into it let me go ahead and share what a few people had to say about just this whole situation that's going on with the race and everything and then I'm going to play a few clips to go down the timeline to see what's going on about this situation what's going on and how all this stuff came about and people care about this um but this conversation that was had between uh prince harry and and Meghan markle with oprah right it's going viral because uh prince harry and and, and Meghan markle uh are going through this i don't know drama with the british crown in which you know apparently they don't like them right they don't like each other they they beefing right they got beef and, uh, you know, they're playing the racism slash victimhood card. I mean, they took a page straight out of the woke playbook, the Black Lives Matter playbook. And these fabulously rich uh, <laughs> royals are now playing victims. So, uh, you know, let All right. So, y'all, here, here y'all go. You know, they, they playing the victim. And I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to see what happened along the lines. And we're going to go back in time all the way from back then all the way to now. But let me see what the comments is saying about this. While the world is in a crisis, she's worried about her son not having a title. Girl, bye. This cup was a joke and an embarrassment to society. Three billion dollars sitting there being about how oppressed they are. Ha, laugh out loud. This is sickening. When so many people are hurting for the basic things in life, Oprah, put your money where your mouth is and help people. Yes, help somebody. Y'all up here talking about your kids don't have a title, but it's a lot of kids out here hungry, poor, and with no families at all. So just help somebody. Go to the press and and and, and offer to help somebody. But you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do this review. I'm not going to be biased about it. I'm going to go down the timelines and just take all of this, this how I personally feel out. And I'm going to uh, do my commentary based off of that. So let's go. Let, let's get into it. Now, 
you know, Megan, Megan got tired of eating tea and crumpets and she, she wanted McDonald's and, and now they, they mad at her for eating McDonald's and now they got to come back to the States. You know, they, they running away now. They running away because P Prince Harry, he hungry too. He hungry too. And he couldn't eat like he want to. So, you know, Megan want to cook some home cooked meals and the, the, the palace won't let her do it. They just won't let her do it. They got her walking around like this. They got her walking around and running in pencil skirts. She can't go exercise like she want to because she got to wear skirts all her life. And she tired of doing all that. And I don't blame them. But see, the royal palace, you got Queen Elizabeth up in there. She's still going by these, by the, by the um, 1300 BC handbook. She's still going by the 1300 BC handbook. And, you know, she, she, she not bending. She is not going to be, and she's not going to fold. Ain't no Hennessy or no Patron in the world going to get her to fold. And she, she's not going to, it's nothing going to change. See, Prince Harry promised Megan that things will change. He said, things will change once I get up in here because I am the son. I am the son and we're going to make it all work out because I read an article. I think it was like article one, section 10, where they said that, um, uh, a person of an American citizen cannot be given any royal titles within the within the royal government. They can't be given any titles, and that's why when they had their son, the 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 rule the handbook said that he wasn't going to be given a title, and I don't think that's fair. You know, she's married to this man. These children should have some type of royalties, and 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 they should have some type of say so too when they get older. You know, it's not like she just brought the whole family over there. It's not like she bringing everybody in the United States over there and that we just trying to take over the kingdom. So I think some stuff could be changed up in there. But the father, Megan's father, spoke out uh, a couple of years ago when they first got married. And I think he was in the hospital at the time. He wasn't able to attend the wedding. And he spoke out about, you know, how he felt about everything and about him not being able to attend the wedding. And then he spoke out again. So let me go ahead and play this interview. I hope it doesn't get blocked. I'm going to try to do it a different way because I've been making videos and they've been getting blocked because of the sources that I'm using. So I'm going to try to do it a different way and just put the picture up and play the interview from my phone and see what that works instead of sharing my screen with it. He's great. He's an interesting guy. He's a prince, but my daughter has been a princess since the day she was born. Meghan Markle's father, Thomas Markle, breaks his silence in his first TV interview after he missed the royal wedding due to heart surgery. He opened up on Monday's Good Morning Britain with Pierce Morgan and Susanna Reed. Daddy, I have a new boyfriend, and uh, and I, I said that's really nice. And then the next call was like he's British. And I said, well, that's really nice. And then eventually the third time around, it was like, he's a prince. Thomas sharing his side of the story on how Prince Harry and Meghan's courtship turned into a happily ever after. Before news broke of their engagement, Harry stayed true to tradition, asking for Meghan's hand in marriage. And they called me together, and uh, Harry asked for her hand over the phone. And I said, uh, you're a gentleman. Uh, Promise me you'll never raise your hand against my daughter, and of course I give you my permission. Thomas also apologized for staging paparazzi photos, calling it a serious mistake. I will absolutely want to walk my daughter down the aisle. And also expressed his feelings about Megan being walked down the aisle by Prince Charles instead of him. How can I ask for a better replacement for Charles? I was thrilled to tears that he was doing that for me. I just wish it had been my hand holding my daughter, not his. But just he was wonderful for doing it. One step at a time, and hopefully we'll, we'll start a family in the near future. Well, Thomas has the same hope for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. She's wanted children for a long time, yes. And uh, and she's uh, when when she when she met Harry and she spoke about how much she loves him. There's got to be a child in the making somewhere soon.
Now, what do y'all think about that? I'm going to go ahead and go to, go to YouTube and go over to the comment section and see what they're saying about this. Okay. Now, let's see what they're saying in the comment section about this. We're not going to play this video because it's going to get blocked, but I'm going to go ahead and go down to the comment section. All right, let's see. I would like for him and his daughter, Samantha, to be silent. Thank you. Hmm. Mate, just keep quiet. Oh, I didn't read this one. Silence is golden. At no time has Doria given any interviews, not even to Oprah, because she is looking out for Megan, not herself. Megan's uh, paternal side of the family, including her father, should not speak to the press. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I wonder if he got paid for this interview also. This interview is another serious mistake. He's pushed his daughter even further away. Sometimes family can hurt you way more than strangers can. Hmm. Look like these strangers in the palace is hurting her right now. Um, he sounds sincere, but his other daughter needs to stop talking. That was a clear case of attention seeking, especially when she changed her name back to Markle. Hmm. Let's see what the sister, who is his sister is that's talking that they keep saying need to be quiet. Because we finna get down to the nitty gritty. I want to get the whole story. See, I don't, I like to see why things are going on and what the timeline was for when it happened. Okay. Samantha Markle. I guess that's her last name now. Well, she recently did one. Reacts to Meghan Markle's interview. Thomas Markle, Samantha Markle react to Meghan Markle's interview. Let me pull this up on my phone so I won't have to play it on here. Hmm, it's a lot of stuff going on. Father's betrayal, half sister Samantha, tell all book. Okay, that's why they're telling her to be quiet because she's telling it all. She's telling everything and it looks like she's trying to make herself relevant in she's trying to use her lifestyle to make herself relevant and popular. But let's see what they're talking about. This is this is not nothing that I just know of for sure, because I, I haven't really been following this for a while, but I was asked to react to this. But I got to change up how I do it now because they just keep blocking everything. Okay, here it is. A minute and 44 seconds. This was a day ago. Uh, I've apologized about this thing. Uh, what happened uh, at least a hundred times or so. Meghan Markle's family is speaking out after her tell-all interview. We've got all the details in today's S Daily. Meghan spoke candidly about her fallout with her father ahead of her marriage to Harry in May 2018. Their initial friction came after her father's paparazzi photo scandal that same month, which led to his absence from their nuptials. I mean, I look at Archie, I think about this child, and I go, I can't, um, I genuinely can't imagine doing anything to intentionally cause pain to my child. I can't, I can't imagine it. So it's hard for me to reconcile that. Thomas told Good Morning Britain that he got sucked into the paparazzi and did deny that the photographs of him were taken to Megan. He also addressed Megan's story about Archie's skin color, saying that he has great respect for the royals and he doesn't think the British royal family are racist at all. She changed her last name back to Markle in, I think she was in her early 50s at that time, only when I started dating Harry. Hmm. So I think that says enough. As for Megan's half-sister, Samantha Markle, she told Inside Edition that the truth was totally ignored and omitted. Megan claimed that she grew up as an only child and that she doesn't know Samantha. Samantha said, I don't know how she can say I don't know her and she was an only child. We've got photographs over a lifespan of us together. So how can she not know me? Megan and Samantha have been at odds since before her marriage to Harry in May of 2018, with Samantha criticizing her sister in the press and social media. Well, God dang. Um, so it sounds to me like her and her sister been beefing even before she got married. But why did the half sister change her last name to Markle? 
that is that's kind of suspect suspect right there let me um read this article concerning the skin color of the um child because that's not right i don't think i don't see how skin color I already got this racial conflict going on right now and a lot of people have been saying they are, are against all of these racist matters that's going on but secretly it seems like it's still there and it's still a concern especially when skin color is mentioned when it's not really relevant because we're all people and we're all humans at the end of the day. So let's see what they're saying in discussion about Megan says Royals discussed her son's skin color. Hopefully this doesn't get blocked. Okay, I'm awake. Let's do this. In those months when I was pregnant, all around this same time, so we have in tandem the conversation of he won't be given security. He's not gonna be given a title. And also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? And who, who is having that conversation with you? What? So, um, there is a conversation. Hold up, hold up. There's Stop several right now. There are several conversations. There's a about conversation it. with you, with Harry, about how dark your baby is going to be, potentially, and what that would mean or look like. Ooh. Priceline works with top. Mm. that's that's messed up that is messed up and that lets you know that a lot of stuff just hasn't changed like we are already here in the 21st century and we still got this stuff going on and it's like when is it gonna change like I, it's 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 it saddens me but it saddens me when we get into these situations we marry out of love and we, we think that everything's gonna be peaches and cream and then we can feel so isolated just by a whole family of people or just by a whole slew of people that just doesn't have any type of morals or integrity about themselves now we're going to go back to this interview that i mean this um we're going to go back to this article that i seen over here and we're going to read who was talking about this and who had this interview with her concerning his skin during Sunday, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. During Sunday night's explosive interview, which that was part of it that I just played, with Oprah Winfrey on CBS, Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, revealed that there was an open discussion about how dark their baby skin color would be on Monday morning. Oprah told CBS this morning that neither Queen Elizabeth II nor Prince Philip made the comments after describing the conversations about how archie would not be given the title of prince and how he wouldn't have security megan said there were discussions while she was pregnant about how dark archie's skin color would be in those months when i was pregnant all around the same time so we have in tandem of when tandem the conversation of he wouldn't be given security He's not going to be given a title and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he was born, when he's born, Megan said. Okay, let me see. So she wouldn't reveal who it was who had the conversation with Harry saying it would be very damaging to them. Hmm. Okay, at Oprah says it's not his grandmother nor grandfather that were a part of the conversations about Prince Harry, Prince Harry and Meghan's baby skin color. Let's see what this little clip has to say. Let, let's pick it up right where we left off before the commercial break, where Harry wants to make it very clear, it seems, that he did not blindside the queen. We left, I don't know if you could hear it, 
with a bite where you said, doesn't the queen get to do what the queen wants to do? He had made several attempts to see his grandmother. Yes, and I think uh, that was such an important story uh, to be shared last night. Uh, in the process of trying to um, edit this three hours and 20 minutes down to an hour and 25 minutes, mm -hmm. I'd said to my team, the most important question to be answered here at the end of this show will be, why did they leave? And I think the stories about being blindsided, uh, blindsiding the queen were very, very damaging to them and also hurtful because they understood very clearly that there had been months and months of preparation before they actually moved to Canada. And, and, and truthfully, there was a statement by the queen, Her Majesty the Queen, on January 18th in which she said, uh, following many months of conversations and more recent discussions, I am pleased that together we have found constructive and supportive way forward for my grandson and his family. So the queen on January 18th actually uh, uh, said that there had been months of conversation, but in spite of that, there were still all of those stories about blindsiding the queen, blindsiding That's the queen. That's why the details so are important. I'm very happy that... That is why the details are That's important. That's why the details that the are important. Tab tab tabloids mm -hmm. print stuff that they know is false and have been told isn't true. But Oprah, it's, it's also... Right. The, the question remains why the queen cannot dictate who she sees and when she sees them, and it seems to come back to something that Megan pointed out early, that there's the family and then there's the institution. And you were constantly trying to probe the difference between the two. What did you take away from that? I took away from that that there are, as Harry just indicated, there are people surrounding the family who are advisors to the family who have been there for a long time. And that's a part of the hierarchical structure. And those people have a lot of influence and also input. You get it. I mean, you, you mentioned last night, Oprah, that you, you watch The Crown. I do, too. You get a sense of that in The Crown, that that actually there, there is almost kind of like a deep state within the monarchy that actually runs the monarchy. Uh, but I Sounds like a whole institution to me, and it's a lot that you have to deal with and a lot of you got to put up with just to have a certain type of structure with that type of lifestyle. I feel for them, and, and I'm glad that they made the decision that they made because that's the only way things are going to change. Like when it comes to certain situations where it comes to um, certain guidelines and morals, then you have to kind of just go off what is right. We got to know that these guidelines are made by people first. And being that we are individuals, we are able to say what is right and what is wrong when it comes to making changes to that. There's rules um, in the royal family that they're not allowed to break. But then we got to realize that we are people first. And we got to realize that people made this handbook. And people are able to change the handbook. And when we're talking about changing the handbook, we're not talking about doing anything that just goes against um, humanity. We're just talking about doing things that's right. And we know that the royal family is required to follow an extensive list of rules and, and protocols. But however, like the queen and the family members, they 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 still kind of enjoy a lot of the perks that they have while breaking the rules when it comes to um the the, the jury duties and when it comes to the press and all of that stuff they they still enjoy their little perks that they have when they're allowed to break certain rules when it benefits them and the, the funny thing about it is like the queen is allowed to break rules without any type of repercussions so they have that authority to basically do the things that they want to do that benefits them, but still have rules and regulation to the, to the members of the British monarchy. And they are required to follow those rules. I don't even really think the queen can be arrested. Like they, and, and this just goes with the um, meaning that she is effectively exempt from the law because their laws are different than our laws.
And that's why even like the persecutions back in the day, they're able to persecute other people, but they're not able to be persecuted themselves if they were to go outside of the regulations and guidelines. Um, it's a lot of stuff to this. Um, you just have to kind of look it up to see what kind of guidelines that they have. But a lot of people will say things like, oh, I hate the United States or I wish I was, you know, in another country where rules were like this or that so we can have certain things. But the truth be told, I've been over to Iraq. You know, I've been overseas before and I, I, it made me appreciate having the freedom that I have to do what I want to do over here in the United States. Like the United States is effed up, but I guarantee you that there's a lot of stuff overseas and a lot of places overseas to where if you think this is messed up you're going to be feeling like you're in prison when you over there you're going to feel like you're in prison you ain't going to have little you're not going to you're going to have little to no rights so that made me appreciate it and i'm just letting y'all know y'all should appreciate it as well like i uh, us as a whole collectively can make this a better place but we made it bad for ourselves our freedom is what we should enjoy about the United States, not the people that make it who it is, make it what it is. One thing I see about Harry during all of this is that he is not letting the royal family control him and his duties as a man, his duty as a father, and just protecting his wife and protecting his family doing what he's supposed to do it's not like Megan is being unreasonable or calling causing the royal family any harm um these people are using this royal handbook to be able to control her and change her as a person and basically just kind of isolate their children outside of what is still rightfully theirs and I don't think that that's right because we're talking about children and a mother is going to care for her children a mother is going to be there for her children she's not going to go for a, a, a book that's going to say I'm going to separate separate my children from the things that I have in this life so I applaud them for going about their own way because you have to stand up for something if you don't stand up for something you'll fall for anything and if something does happen to her, then what about her children? Will her children be taken care of? Will her children have any rights or will her children have anything to fall back on? That's the real question. If something happens to her, what happens to the kids? If something happens to both of them, because I know something happens to her, I know that Prince Harry is going to do for his children, of course. But what if something happens to him? What if something happens to him? what's going to happen to them because they don't they're not really taking favor to her as well to, to Megan as well so that's just something that you have to look at and these people seem like they got their ducks in a row to keep their system the way they want it to be so let's see what this sister is talking about let's see what the beef is about now I seen in the other clip that it said that she didn't really know Samantha like that. That's what they said. And Samantha said, I don't know how she said she didn't know me when we took pictures together and, and all of this stuff. So let me see who's telling the truth. Let's see who's telling the truth, if, if they knew each other or not. Okay. Megan Markle's family. All right. That's Megan right there. Why do they keep? All right, we need to find the sister. Where the sister at? Why do I click on one picture and it goes to another? That look like Samantha. I don't look like Megan though, is it? Let's see. Okay, this this looked like she was a she was bigger. She's a little older than the other one. I 
why do this stuff keep popping up oh my god how old is samantha markle 56 years old how old is megan markle megan markle is 39 years old okay so samantha is 56 years old and megan is 39 years old so there's a big difference. Um, I can believe Megan when she says that she didn't really know Samantha like that because Samantha was already a grown woman. Well, almost a grown woman when she was born. Let me do the calculations real quick. 56. Fifty-six minus 39. Okay, so Samantha was 17 when Markle came into uh, when Megan came into the picture so I can understand where she says she didn't know her like that because she was already about to be grown in another year and so she was already dang now at the house when Megan came along and you know kids don't remember stuff from the age of one to four you know you start gaining your memory at like five and six and on up so she was grown by the time she could remember anything about Samantha. So that's the truth then. You know, that is the truth. And that's what makes sense. You know, they probably have pictures together. Um, Samantha was, was having pictures together of her when she was young. But um, who knows how, how much she was around like that to grow up with her. Like you know of your sibling, you know your siblings, but you know them really good when you grow up with in the same house with them. You know, it's different when you just coming over and stuff like that, but you know them real good when y'all about around the same age and y'all grow up in the same house. You know, so I'm not really saying anybody is like fully lying about anything, but I can it will make more sense for her to say that she don't know her like that, like a close tight bond because she was already grown. I know plenty of family that's like that. And then especially like if you're um, a stepsister or a stepbrother, most of the time, I'm not saying all the time, most of the time, those children cling more to the mother's side than the father's side. So they, they, you will see them more, you will see them come around more on the mother's side because the mother usually raises them and you know they might come to their father's house with the visitation they may come to their father's house but the mother usually raises them and they're usually more more seen on that side of the family so i can believe uh, megan when she says that so let's get back to this catastrophe and look at the second interview that the father made Okay, so this interview says that Thomas Markle admits he lied to Megan Markle and claims she ghosted her family. Hmm, she ghosted her family. Let's see what he says about that. Depression. It's a dark, lonely place. This is art inspired by real stories of people living with bipolar. About this thing, uh, what happened uh, at least a hundred times or so. Bottom line is I've never- In terms of betrayal, what was your reaction when you heard her talk to Oprah like that? Well, like I said, this, uh, this is actually the first time I've heard her speak in, in four years, about four years. Uh, the last time we spoke, I was I actually we didn't speak. We actually texted each other. I was laying in a hospital bed after having a heart attack, and uh, uh, and I had to tell them that I couldn't come to the wedding. Uh, at that point, uh, uh, we pretty much said we pretty much said goodbye. I actually actually wasn't quite saying goodbye. Uh, Harry, Harry had said to me at that point, if you had listened to me, uh, this wouldn't have happened to you. And uh, uh, 
me laying in a hospital bed after I've had a procedure and getting a stent put here and a stent put here, felt that that was kind of snotty, so I hung up on him. And that's the last uh, conversation we ever had. Thomas, you've never met Harry. You've never met your grandson, Archie. Right. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinarily sad family situation, putting aside the fact there's royalty involved and everything else. How do you feel about this? Well, I'm very, I'm very disappointed about it. I don't think that, uh, I mean, I, I've, uh, I've apologized about this thing, uh, what happened uh, at least a hundred times or so. Bottom line is I've never heard back from Megan or Harry in any way, shape or form. Uh, when they say that I'm marrying and taking advantage of the press, well, basically what I do, because I haven't heard from them, is I'll do a story for the press. If I don't hear from them in 30 days, then I'll do another story for the press. And I've yet to hear from them. Thomas. Uh, I would love to hear from them. Uh, and of course. And they, they would say, Thomas, why do you keep talking to the press? What, what's your response to that? Because they're not talking to me. The story. Uh, uh, when they decide to talk to me, I'll stop talking to the press. Okay. The story that appears to have uh, caused the rift was uh, you making a deal with a photographer to have photographs of you um, put into the public domain, which painted, in your view, you in a better light, um, researching royal palaces, um, being measured up for a suit. And it seems that what Megan is saying is she asked you at the time, uh, did you do that? Because their issue was the way they were being covered, their privacy being invaded, trying to protect everybody around them and make sure that the press only had limited access. She says in the interview that she asked you, did you do that? And that you didn't admit to doing it. Why weren't you honest with her about what you've done? Can I tell my done? side now? Of course you can. Okay, well, my daughter, my daughter, my, my oldest daughter was contacted by a man named Jeff Rayner, who was a photographer, who said, uh, if you can convince your dad, we can make him look good. For a year, an entire year, every day I walked out of my house, somebody was taking photographs of me. Um, I couldn't go anywhere or do anything without being photographed, buying something, coming out of a store. And God forbid I'm buying beer for the guys at the guard gate. Everybody knows I don't drink, but I bought beer for the guard, guys at my guard gate. And they were, they were making me an alcoholic. They were calling me names. They were talking about the way I dress. So yes, I went for this deal where this man was going to make me look better. Uh, maybe I got sucked into it, but I believed them and I thought it was going to work. It didn't work, of course. Uh, when it was exposed, um, I called him. I, I, you know, I, I said, what's happening? You know, bottom line is he's supposed to have been a great distance away from me shooting on long lens. He actually. Wow. Oof, it's just the plot thickens. They don't have no comments on here. Let me see something. I want to see what the comments are saying about this. Well, you know, from then all the way on up until now, um, he's been doing a lot of interviews lately. And like I said, I don't know what the motives is, but it seems like he's kind of playing both sides. You know, he, he takes up for the the British family, he, he takes up for the British royals and then he kind of, you know, throws everybody else under the bus. So I just think if you're trying to be for your daughter, just be fully for her and don't try to play sides in your favor. But I could be wrong. I could be looking at it all wrong and reading it all wrong, but he, he's playing a, 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 a sneaky game here. So, I mean, I don't really know what to think about this. I just know that being a, a parent, if I raise my kids 
and I can't see my grandson or I can't see my granddaughter, let alone my child. And I cannot just basically see my whole family no more just because of all of this royal mess that really would sadden me. And I feel, I mean, he may have did some stuff in the public eye, but who's not? The royal family is doing it. These people was going to get into the royal family business anyway, because that that's what the press does. This lady was an actress and he's a prince. So they was going to dig in regardless. So I just don't really think that all of that should be brought down on the father, whether he did it or not. I really don't know what the motives was, but I know that this is her father and a father is concerned about their child. And most of the times, Parents are going to go through great lengths to make sure that their children are good, whether it's them doing something the right way or the wrong way. They're going to go through great lengths of trying to make sure that their children are good. So I, I'm, I'm sad about it. I don't know how everybody else feels about it, but I'm sad about it. I'm just sad that he can't see his, his, his daughter let alone his grandkids. He has a right to see, at least see them or hear something from them. But I don't know why he's painted out to be such this bad person unless I'm just missing some things. I, like I said, I really don't know the full extent of what's going on, but it, it saddens me to see this going on because I'm putting myself in his shoes as a parent raising children. Let's see... I see another one. It says, this was one year ago. It says, Thomas Markle um, has trouble buying that Meghan Markle was racially bullied. Wow, what, what is this? So we're talking about this racial issue that's going on now about the color of the sun's skin. But then a year ago, it looks like it was some racial bullying going on beforehand. So let's see what this 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 is about because it looked like this is not anything that's new. Let's see if they got the com oh they turned the comments off. Let's see what what's what's going on with this. Let me look it up on my phone so it won't. Now if they block this video, I'm gonna be highly upset because I took my time. Thomas Markle. Hold on. Thomas Markle has trouble buying that Meghan Markle was racially bullied. <laughs> All right, one year ago, you guys. When I had acne, I made up a lot of excuses. I actually am writing a novel. You know, I'm trying to be less popular these days. Now, I use different gel. Take the 90 day challenge now and you'll get consistently clear skin too. Do things different. Well, um, I'm still very disappointed as to what happened. Uh, I think it's a misunderstanding that should be worked out, not on, not on television and not in front of the world, but uh, between two families or between the three or four of us getting together and talking about it. Uh, I'm not sure uh, exactly how to approach this. It's, uh, I'll always hope that we can, we, can, we, can, we can come together at some point. However, right now with what's going on, uh, the break from the royals is uh, gonna cause uh, far more problems. What I'm saying now will also cause problems with Megan as well as Harry. Uh, but I, I just can't understand what's going on. It's interesting uh, that you would- As far as a, a grandfather, uh, as far as a grandfather, I'm really disappointed I haven't seen my grandson. Uh, and uh, and I really miss my daughter. It's interesting Harry, you I've acknowledge- it, You acknowledge that doing interviews um, will not make it easier. Are there other ways that you have been trying to reach out to your daughter, to Meghan, to Prince Harry, um, to, to try and repair this relationship? Or do you think that, that your relationship with them is effectively over? 
Well, there, there doesn't, for me, there is no other way to reach them. I mean, like I say, uh, I pretty much will give an interview and wait for 30 days for some kind of answer back. If I don't get one back, then I'll try another interview. Uh, that's about the only shot I have. Uh, I can't, uh, I can't get through to the Royals or send, I, I mean, I can send a letter. I'm not sure it will get to them. Uh, I have done that. I've spoken uh, and sent uh, letters to Doria to get to Megan as well. And I, that hasn't happened. Meaning the firm strict advice from the medical staff there that you were not to fly. Uh, it, it seems that the core of this sort of severance between you all was their fundamental refusal to believe what was happening to you. There are some people, and I would put myself one of them, that for two people like Megan and Harry that go on and on about being compassionate and tolerant and mental health and so on, to actually not apparently show you any concern in such a serious moment in your life with your health, that didn't show much compassion to me. Well, uh, there, like I said, I've produced 41 pages from the hospital uh, where the doctor said that if I hadn't had the procedure, I'd be dead now. Uh, and uh, he also, uh, had, uh, in a statement, said that he would not allow me to fly anywhere. So, yeah, we've proven that and put that out there. And that's been well known now, or is well known now. Uh, Harry and Megan... Um, guess didn't believe it um, I'm, I, I, that's the only thing I, I can assume but we we've proven it so many times at this point that uh, it's time to talk so uh, that's all I can offer uh, and you were you were watching I don't know what else what else I have to give them well you had to watch on television as Prince Charles a man you've never met walked your daughter down the aisle at a wedding watched by a billion people around the world. What was that moment like for you, Thomas? As, as a man, this is your only... Okay, it looked like they're talking about the same stuff that I already covered. So I don't know what this part of racially... <laughs> I don't know what this part of racially bully of what they're talking about, but we're going to go ahead and get on into this reaction okay we have here where it says um megan kelly has an unsympathetic view of prince harry and megan's plea for protection hmm let's see what she's talking about because there's a lot of stuff in here i'm kind of on the fence about at grand canyon university visit gcu.edu <laughs> Let's talk to Megan Kelly. She hosts the Megan Kelly Show podcast. And Megan, you came over to cover uh, Harry and Megan's royal wedding for NBC's morning show today. Uh, and that was a time when there was uh, universal, I'd say, love and admiration for the couple. But they say it all went downhill from there. And, you know, she has made some pretty explosive ac accusations and allegations not just about the royal family, but about the impact that it had on them. Will she, will they get sympathy or criticism over in the States, which loves the royal family? What do they feel about the couple? I think over here it's breaking down by uh, party. The more conservative leaning people are against them and the more liberal people are for them and, uh, and against the monarchy. So it's sort of the same today as it was yesterday. But I'll tell you, just watching it myself, and I was one of the people on the streets rooting for them, delighted that this was happening, right? It was exciting. Um, she was an American, she's a person of color. It looked like the modernization of the British monarchy. The, the British people adored her. I saw them, I interviewed them. Um, but what I saw tonight was somebody who's totally unself-aware. I mean, completely unaware of how she sounded, right? Like. I, I wasn't planning on saying anything shocking, except for my husband's racist family almost drove me to suicidal thoughts while I was pregnant with my baby. Um, and by the way, I, I had no idea what the internet said about Harry. Nobody believes that. And I, I thought meeting the queen was gonna be just like meeting a celebrity in Los Angeles, like like meeting a Kris Jenner, right? Like nobody believes that. Then she goes on to say like, 
I'm not, I don't, I don't believe in any of the grandeur, you know, there's an article already up in the New York Post here in the States saying, this is a person who had Clooney and Oprah at her wedding, even though she didn't even know them, and then covered herself in blood diamonds from the Saudi prince. So like, spare us that you're not into any of the grandeur. And then while she's spinning this tale about how tough she had it in the castle, how lonely she was in the castle, um, she's, she's painting herself in sort of these adorations, like, I, I'm, it was incredibly courageous of me to come forward about my depression. And I just love saving things. And it was like, it was just peppered with these compliments of herself while she was making these complaints that will be totally unrelatable to 99% of the people out there. Yeah, I, you know what, Meg? I couldn't have put that better myself. So, uh, but mainly because it's the level of disingenuousness. And Harry also, you know, to a point, I expected all this from Meghan Markle. I could almost have scripted what she was going to do. Mental health, race, all the hot button things were going to be played against the royal family. There'd be no names. They wouldn't name people on that. They just leave it hanging so we could look at all the royal family and the whole palace staff as a bunch of callous racists. And that's exactly what she did. And I expected all that. And I expected all the layers of hypocrisy. Prince Harry is the one that I'm staggered by. As his grandfather lies in hospital, aged 99, entering his third or fourth week now, clearly been very seriously ill, had a heart procedure a few days ago. The, the Queen must be worried sick about her husband. And the Queen and Prince Philip have worked so hard for seven decades now to preserve the monarchy. And in two hours, Prince Harry has allowed his wife to trash everything that they stand for. I, I just don't get what he's thinking. Well, and meanwhile... Her implication that somebody in the royal family objected to her having a baby of color could, I mean, right here, on uh, uh, the speculation on Twitter is that it was that it was Prince Philip, right? So I don't know who it was, but while the guy's in the hospital, you might you might want to put like a corral around him and say, I can tell you it's not the suffering 99-year-old. I don't, something, right, to like throw the guy a bone. But the other thing about Harry Pierce is that he his biggest complaint and her biggest complaint was we were worried about the security. We, we, we were worried about the security of our son. Why would they take it away? Why wouldn't they make him a prince? By the way, I care nothing about titles at all, but why, why wasn't my son a damn prince? Um, okay, so we're worried about security. And then Harry's saying, all I had was my mother's inheritance. So I looked that up, it's about 15, $16 million. So you're telling the American public, the British public right now, we're supposed to feel sorry for you because you couldn't find a way to pay for your own security when you haven't had to pay for a dime of your own life so far. The British taxpayers have paid for everything. Exactly. And okay. now you might have to pay for some All security. Right. Even, Megan, the refurb Megan. even the refurbishment. Okay, Even Megan. the two and a half million pound refurbishment okay. of the Frogmore Cottage was paid for by us. They eventually paid it back from their Netflix gazillion. But they mention in their interview that they were subject to death threats. And we know that even if, they, if Prince Harry took a step away from the royal family, by dint of his birth, he is always going to be to a hire your own security. You're not going to do he's, royal he's duty. going to be at risk. You're not going to do the royal you duty. Expect, because Sorry. you don't change your birth then, you, when you step to away from the royal family. So Megan, out of your own is it not reasonable for them to expect to continue to be protected? Because I think a lot of people will think it is. Really? And, they and they're earning 100 million from Netflix. I, mean, I, I wouldn't presume to speak for the, for the palace, right, and how the rules are. But I think as a grown adult, you know what the rules are. And when you are a multimillionaire with all that dough in your pocket, you've never had to pay for anything your entire life, you can shell out a few dollars to protect your child if you're that worried about it. A lot of people have had death threats. I'm sorry to say it's a faction of modern life if you are a famous person. And they're going to have to deal with this. And so far, they seem to be very well ensconced in a very safe place here in California. But if you want your liberty, then you're going to have to pay for it. That's the way life works. It's really, I think it's, it's not so a unsympathetic to, to, to a couple who... Ooh, Megan Kelly is throwing in the heat. She is. She has some. She has some um, points, but then I do get that. You know, it's it was real unsympathetic to not protect the children as well. It, um, like she said, sometimes like life is not fair, and they have their rules. They have their handbooks and the things of how they do it. They real particular about things. So 
take some of that money that you have and do what you need to do with it. And I think that's what they're doing. They went to Canada, they left, and they're doing what they need to do since they can't have things the way that they feel like it should be. But um, as far as like the allegations on the skin color and the um, depression, mental health and stuff like that, people can, this can drive people into a depressive mode. Like when you're stuck somewhere, you have to change your whole lifestyle. You got to change your whole identity. You've been keeping something up for a while. Then it becomes overwhelming and you start losing yourself. Like a lot of people have can identify with losing yourself in another person or within a certain type of lifestyle that they're not used to. And sometimes we think that we can keep that up, but we really can't. I've even been in this situation where I lost myself just trying to be something that I'm not to be with somebody. And I ended up being very, very depressed and, and feeling a little suicidal about it because I didn't I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know how to start over. I didn't know how to do none of that stuff. And it just had went so far so long. And all you can do is just think about how you was before and how things are now. The good thing, the the the, the tricky thing about this is um, as Megan Kelly is bringing up all these inconsistencies of what Megan Markle has brought up, the thing about that is, if these things are very inconsistent, then why has Prince Harry took her side? Why has he not spoke against that and said, hey, you know, this is what it is. This is what you accepted. Don't try to change up now. He hasn't done these things. He's actually um beside her on this and he's going with her on this so some of it has to be some type of truth going on or else both of them wouldn't be in cahoots on trying to leave the palace so i'm i, I mean we know that things happen and, and you let these things happen like who wouldn't have a royal marriage and have everybody at your your um wedding and have all the celebrities who wouldn't do that you would do that anybody would do that but a lot of times people don't know what they're getting into a lot of people don't know what they're stepping into they see things on the surface level and it looks good and they think that everything is going to be okay and they're going to have a perfect life but like i said before in other videos money fame celebrities all of these things does that does not mean that you're not going to have any bad things go on in your life it doesn't mean you're not going to go through any troubles. There's not going to be any racism. There's not going to be any sexism. There's not going to be anything that's going to, none of those things are going to pertain to you because you're being protected and you have money and things of that nature. People that have money do bad stuff too. They have bad mindset, toxic money mindset, and toxic ways of living. So we're not exempt from any of these things just because we have it all. And we are not going to have it all and think that we're going to have more and have more like some things are going to be are not going to be accessible to us and that's the part i can agree with with megan kelly on that you know you've had all of these things all to a certain extent you didn't have to pay for nothing everything was funded to you and you still have money so being that everything is not going to be accessible to people in life take some of that money and make it accessible to yourself Take some of that money and do the things that you need to do because everybody's not everything's not going to be given and handed to us. Even if we are rich, that doesn't mean that you're going to have everything that you want. But this this is a whole big mess, and it needs to be addressed so people can know in the future, so people can know what they're getting themselves into when they're not a part of the royal bloodlines and just know what they're getting themselves into period when it comes to money and fame and fortune okay so the funny thing about this moving to canada thing is a year ago as you can see it says queen announces support for harry and megan's move to canada so this is not anything new reaction to harry and megan's canada move they was talking about moving to canada a year ago news for you. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex uh, will live in Canada part-time. We have just learned that announcement. It comes following an emergency meeting of the royal family. And for more, let's take you to CTV's Vanessa Lee in London. All right, Vanessa, a statement from Buckingham Palace. What does it say? 
Well, that's right, Jennifer. Uh, this uh, emergency summit uh, at Sandringham Estate has just wrapped up. Uh, Prince William, Prince Charles and Prince Harry were seen leaving separately. And let's go now to this statement from Her Majesty. It reads, today my family had very constructive discussions on the future of my grandson and his family. My family and I are entirely supportive of Harry and Meghan's desire to create a new life as a young family. Although we would have preferred them to remain full-time working members of the royal family, we respect and understand their wish to live a more independent life as a family while remaining a valued part of my family. Harry and Meghan have made it clear they do not want to be reliant on public funds in their new lives. It has therefore been agreed that there will be a period of transition in which the Sussexes will spend time in Canada and the UK. And she goes on to say, these are complex matters for my family to resolve and there is some more work to be done, but I've asked for final decisions to be reached in the coming days. I should also point out that we also heard from the Duke of Cambridge and the Duke of Sussex today with regards to a newspaper report suggesting that Prince Harry, uh, Prince William rather's bullying attitude is what has driven uh, the couple to, to want to live, uh, carve out a different path for themselves. The brothers have denied that report. They say that the report went ahead anyways, despite their denials. And their statement reads uh, that uh, for brothers who care so deeply about the issues surrounding mental health, the use of inflammatory language in this way is offensive and potentially harmful, Jennifer. Okay, so like I said, like Megan Kelly, you know, she she spoke on a few things, but it looks like, we're, as you can see, I don't know if you can see the screen, it says January of 2020, like this was a year ago. This stuff has been happening. Um, a lot of things in the Royal Palace have been happening and they've been trying to, I guess, move and, and trying to work things out. That's probably why they hadn't moved yet. But this proves that this is nothing that was just come out that hadn't just came out the blue. I mean, let me see what the comments say. Um, great. Now, next, what is going on with the accusations against Andrew? And this was a charade, a cover up. I was hoping the brother said for those who care so deeply for each other and not for mental health in general, they do care for each other. Let's see. Let me see. Let me see. I hope taxpayers won't have to pay for any of this bull BS. Don't marry a feminist. Ha ha, Canada taxes are going even higher. So they won't be using the Canadian taxpayers' money. We'll see. So this means they keep their titles and, still, and are still on Prince Charles' payroll. If Megan wants to remain working part-time for the royal family, she must refrain from being involved in political activism or making uninformed statements about world leaders. Also, using their loyal, their using their royal titles or derivatives of them must be a no-go. Why on earth would the UK taxpayers agree um, to their living in the tax fund house part-time? In my opinion, they should go. Clean cut, no working ties whatsoever. Megan has made some um, admirable statements from a highly uninformed position. She's not suitable as a royal. Wish them luck on their own. Okay, so she has a point. Like, why still try to get the, the um, funds from them? Why still um, accept funds? Why still... Um, remain part-time working in the UK so you can still gain your position and why still work uh, work part-time so you can get the world titles and derivatives from them like she said if you want to go just go but don't still try to gain royal access while doing so and here I thought Elizabeth being pretty intelligent or Charles her son might make those decisions since Harry and Mar uh, Meghan are part of their family. I'm sure they will weigh your must and must nots carefully, but Jesus, there's also someone telling you how to raise your children. Yeah, that's true. But the thing is, how would the queen 
and the king be okay with you working part-time in the royal palace, but they're not okay with the grandson having a title. That's what I don't understand. You're okay with them working part-time in the palace, which seems tacky to me, but you're not okay with giving the grandson a title. So that seems kind of, if some seems kind of off with that, because they seem like the type of people that will not break the rules of the handbook. Well, yeah, it says Wendy Williams has no sympathy for Meghan Markle. This was a year ago now. Let's see what kind of sympathy she doesn't have for Meghan Markle. A lot of people have shown compassion for Meghan Markle true. after she revealed that she's struggling with the scrutiny that comes with royal life. But one person who has zero sympathy for her, Wendy Williams! <laughs> exactly what you were doing. And I applaud her plotation on the royal situation. <laughs> But please, don't try to garner sympathy from us. You knew what you were doing. You know, with William and Kate, they are grooming because he's going to be the king and she's going to be the queen and the kids are going to be the royals like that. Harry and Meghan have nothing to lose by moving to America. <laughs> yeah. Why not? I mean, move to America, you know, and live part-time in Africa like you want to do. You have to still go back to England. The thing about moving to America is you're really kicking the royal thing out of your life. I mean, I like them. I, I really do like them. But her, there's something about her. You know, you know what I'm saying? But Meghan Markle, nobody feels sorry for you. You knew what you were signing up for, girl. <laughs> so genuinely Gage says, Roz gets so excited when talking about Wendy. So what y'all think? You know, like I said, I'm on the fence about it, but you can't make this stuff up. You think Megan got some up her sleeves? Because you can look this stuff up. You, we, It don't take common sense to know how the royal family works. Like you can look this stuff up. We watched enough fairy tale movies to know how they do things and how particular they are. So she know what she's getting herself into. Now, do you think that she just went ahead and went with it and just stuck her foot in the dough and just said she gonna just change things and make it the way she wanna be afterwards and just putting out all these allegations so she can get what she wants? Do you think she's being a little selfish and unreasonable? Y'all let me know in the comments. Let me read some of these comments down here and see what they're saying. Just like that Wendy was right about them moving to America. All Megan is Z-list <laughs> All Megan is is a Z-list actress to professional victim. Yarn. Let's see. Wendy is just saying what our middle class double job requiring uh, economy class living are thinking whoa that, and that's that that comment got a 435 likes i agree i agree because we're over here having real problems and we're going through all this stuff we're going through racism sexism we're going through uh murders and all kind of things domestic violence and we're still broke we're going through all this stuff and we're still broke and we're going through a lot of things with our spouses and their families and they crazy families and everything. And we got to do the best that we can. But see, the difference between us and her is you got the money. You can do how you want to. You're, you're kind of, you know, complaining about what they won't do for you. But you have the means to do how you want to do, really. You can do that. And you have more access and pri privilege than a lot of us have so that is why a lot of people don't have a lot of sympathy sympathy for this you know everything's not going to be perfect i don't like wendy but she was right on this okay i can't stand them at all wendy has a good intuition see everybody is agreeing with this so wendy williams can say what so many of us have been saying about megan but because she's black she's not deemed racist it's unfair to label every white person with a negative opinion of Megan a racist. Ah, okay, so this has 79 likes. So she has a point there. So I don't know if this person is white or black because they got a sunflower as their picture. But being that, you know, Megan has a little black in her, I guess anytime somebody says something negative about her from what this comment is saying, people were saying that they were racist because they said something against her. But since Wendy said it, now it's okay. 
And I find that to be a problem because what a problem is, is what it is. It's just a problem. It has nothing to do with your skin color. And when it comes to this situation, sometimes it takes longer for us to figure out what's going on before we can actually see the truth. But a lot of times, um, white people and black people think differently because of the privilege and the access that each one of us has against each other. And when you look at the statistics, one is more higher than the other. So while other people are, you know, struggling and just trying to make it, they have a different mindset than ones that already have it. And they're only complaining about other issues that majority of, of us have in the world, but you still have access and privilege to make your life more comfortable than the next person. So I can see how people have different comments and different ways of thinking about things, but that's just how life is. Like this comment lets you all know that this is how things work. This is how the mindset is. And this is just how life is. Nobody's going to agree to disagree and everything is not going to be the same opinion. Wendy Williams does not have sympathy for dot, dot, dot is never a shocking headline. Yeah, she doesn't really have sympathy for anybody. Uh, let's see, when has Wendy Williams ever had sympathy? Um, Wendy knew that when she signed up, what she signed up for when Mary and Kevin, ah, oh, they throwing shots now. But yeah, as unlikable as Wendy can be, she still is real. She is very observant and has a great intuition. She knows how to read people. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that disagree and agree, but it looks like majority of them agree that they do not have sympathy for her. This was actually October 23rd, 2019. They didn't have sympathy th sympathy then. And now they're, they're saying that she's throwing the race card out there. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like Megan is, um, she real sneaky. She real sneaky. I'm not saying she didn't have it bad in the palace, but she's kind of a little unappreciative. She's a little selfish. I wish them well. I wish her and her family well, and I wish them blessings, and I hope everything's okay. But you have to treat people right and treat people fairly in order to have that in return. Forgiveness is key. And that's all I got to say about the whole thing. Treat people how you want to be treated and forgive those that treat you wrong in the process. All right, y'all. Y'all like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button for the next video.